Hi, Mike again. I have been asked on many occasions about Saul Alinsky's rules for radicals. Today, I am going to list his 12 rules and then talk a little about how these rules are being used. Rule 1, power is not only what you have, but what the enemy thinks you have. Power is derived from two main sources money and people. Have-nots must build power from flesh and blood. These are two things of which there is a plentiful supply. Government and corporations always have a difficult time appealing to people, and usually do so almost exclusively with economic arguments. Rule 2, never go outside the expertise of your people. It results in confusion, fear and retreat. Feeling secure adds to the backbone of anyone. Organizations under attack wonder why radicals don't address the real issues. This is why. They avoid things with which they have no knowledge. Rule 3, whenever possible, go outside the expertise of the enemy. Look for ways to increase insecurity, anxiety and uncertainty. This happens all the time. Watch how many organizations under attack are blindsided by seemingly irrelevant arguments that they are then forced to address. Rule 4, make the enemy live up to its own book of rules. If the rule is that every letter gets a reply, send 30,000 letters. You can kill them with this because no one can possibly obey all of their own rules. This is a serious rule. The besieged entity's very credibility and reputation is at stake because if activists catch it lying, they chip away at the damage. Rule 5, ridicule is man's most potent weapon. There is no defense. It's irrational. It's infuriating. It also works as a key pressure point to force the enemy into concessions. Pretty crude, rude and mean, huh? They want to create anger and fear. Rule 6, a good tactic is one your people enjoy. They'll keep doing it without urging and come back to do more. They're doing their thing and will even suggest better ones. Radical activists, in this sense, are no different than any other human being. We all avoid unfun activities, and but we revel at and enjoy the ones that work and bring results. Rule 7, a tactic that drags on too long becomes a drag. Don't become old news. Even radical activists get bored. So to keep them excited and involved, organizers are constantly coming up with new tactics. Rule 8, keep the pressure on. Never let up. Keep trying new things to keep the opposition off balance. As the opposition masters one approach, hit them from the flank with something new. Attack, attack, attack from all sides, never giving the reeling organization a chance to rest, regroup, recover and re-strategize. Rule 9, the threat is usually more terrifying than the thing itself. Imagination and ego can dream up many more consequences than any activist. Perception is reality. Large organizations always prepare a worst-case scenario, something that may be furthest from the activists' minds. The upshot is that the organization will expend enormous time and energy, creating in its own collective mind the direst of conclusions. The possibilities can easily poison the mind and result in demoralization. Rule 10. If you push a negative hard enough, it will push through and become a positive. Violence from the other side can win the public to your side because the public sympathizes with the underdog. Unions used this tactic. Peaceful albeit loud demonstrations during the heyday of unions in the early to mid-20th century incurred management's wrath, often in the form of violence that eventually brought public sympathy to their side. Rule 11, the price of a successful attack is a constructive alternative. Never let the enemy score points because you're caught without a solution to the problem. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Activist organizations have an agenda, and their strategy is to hold a place at the table, to be given a forum to wield their power. So. They have to have a compromise solution. Rule 12, pick the target, freeze it, personalize it, and polarize it. Cut off the support network and isolate the target from sympathy. Go after people and not institutions people hurt faster than institutions. This is cruel, but very effective. Direct, personalized criticism and ridicule works. Can you recognize how some of these rules are being used today? Many in the left follow Alinsky's rules in almost everything they do. Hillary Clinton was a disciple of Saul Alinsky. She wrote her thesis on him and used many of these tactics to help her husband achieve power. You can see Alinsky's rules being used in the riots, the COVID-19 threat and in pushing the racist ideas today. Understanding how progressives use Alinsky's rules in the Cloward Piven plans, is very important. It helps us better understand the actions of progressives, their current plans and their directions for tomorrow. If you want to learn more, visit our website at Nehemiah Reset. Org and watch other videos on this topic and others. Hope to see you soon.